Welcome to a new destination presentation. Today I'm talking about Panama. Panama is a country of cultural and natural beauty. Its roots reach back into history as a trade hub and of course the building of the Panama Canal. Situated on the isthmus between North and South America, Panama is bordered by Costa Rica in the northwest and by Colombia in the southeast. The population of Panama is between three and four million and about 25 to 30,000 American citizens live in the country. Panama City has become an international business center and Panama is now the third or fourth largest economy in Central America. The culture, the customs and the language in Panama are predominantly Caribbean and Spanish. Spanish is in fact the official language, about 93% of the Panamanians speak Spanish as their first language. The Panamanians are also called Panamanios and they're really lovely people and very open to foreign visitors. Going back to the history, in 1501, Rodrigo de Bastidas was the first European to explore the Isthmus of Panama sailing along the western coast. A year later, Christoph Columbus sailing south and eastwards from Central America explored the same area. In September 1510, the first European settlement on American mainland was founded. Panama became part of the Spanish Empire and remained Spanish for over 300 years. That's from 1513 to 1821. In 1826, Simon Bolivar held a meeting in Panama City urging the union of the Latin American countries. After many struggles against the Spanish domination, Bolivar succeeded in liberating Central America. Um, he liberated Bolivia, Colombia, also Ecuador, Peru and Venezuela. And he created Gran Colombia, which encompassed all these states. Although Bolivar was unable to keep Gran Colombia together, he is nevertheless uh, the, the big hero throughout Latin America. Panama, along with the rest of the Hispanic America, celebrated her independence from Spain on November 28, 1821. The first 80 years following independence from Spain, Panama was a department of Colombia. It was then separated and became an independent state on November 3, 1903. That was still 11 years before the opening of the Panama Canal. The most common religion in Panama is Roman Catholicism. Various sources estimate that between 75 and 85% of the population identifies itself as Roman Catholic. The Panamanian currency uh, is officially the Balboa. It is fixed at parity with the United States dollar since the independence in 1903. Uh, in practice, the country is dollarized. Panama has its own coinage, but uses US dollar for all its paper currency. You probably have seen the Panama hat, or just called the Panama. It is a traditional brimmed hat of Ecuadorian origin. The name um, became, became Panama hat um, because When President Theodore Roosevelt visited the Panama Canal construction site, he wore such a hat from Ecuador um, and he was on all the pictures where he was visiting Panama wearing this hat, so it became known as the Panama hat. The hats are made from a very certain species of palm tree, the Torquilla straw plant, and they're mostly still produced in Ecuador. The Bridge of the Americas, which spans the Pacific entrance to the Panama Canal, um, was at one time the only non-swinging bridge uh, connecting North and South America. Uh, that was before the opening of the Centennial Bridge in 2004. The Bridge of the Americas cr uh, crossing the Panama Canal was built between 1959 and 1962 by the United States at a cost of about 20 million US dollars. From its completion in 62 until the opening of the Centennial Bridge, it was also part of the um, Pan-American Highway. 
Then the Pan American Highway was moved to the new um, Centennial Bridge. Undoubtedly, the most cosmopolitan city in Central America is Panama City. It is both a gateway to Panama's natural riches and it's also a vibrant destination in its own right. It is a thriving center of international trade and banking and it sports a, a skyline of shimmering glass and steel towers that is uh, reminiscent of Miami. Not surprisingly, the uh, city residents often joke that Panama City is the Miami of the South, except that uh, more English is spoken in Panama City than in Miami. Joking. Panama City is a very multicultural place with uh, large populations from many different parts of the world. Spanish is, of course, uh, the first language, but uh, English is spoken a lot in various forms. Uh, Panama City has a total metro population of well over 1 million inhabitants. Panama Bayou was the first city in Panama and it was founded by the Spanish back in 1519. That was the first city founded at the Pacific and it became rapidly a prosperous point where all the gold and the riches from the southern Spanish colonies like in Peru um, were taken to and to be carried on to Europe. The Spanish managed to keep the existence of Panama City a secret in Europe for over a hundred years. But when it became known, especially to the English, Panama City was attacked by pirates. It was attacked several times and the last attack by pirate Handy Morgan destroyed the city forever. That happened in 1671. Two years later, the survivors built a new city, which is now Panama City. Um, this time they built a fortification wall around it and they built it about uh, eight miles further down the coastline. Now the uh, ruins of old Panama can still be visited. They have a newly erected museum, museum there, which uh, highlights the archaeological finds. And there's also an audio visual presentation there. It's a very interesting museum and small district uh, of um, Panama Veyu that's now part of UNESCO World Heritage. Panama City itself, the new Panama City, also has an old part, Casco Antigo or Casco Veyu. Um, there you will find many Spanish and French colonial style buildings. There are cathedrals and museum. The architecture in this old part of the city is a blend of uh, French, uh, Spanish and Italian styles. The cathedral was built between 1688 and 1796 and it is a magnificent example of the religious colonial architecture in Panama. Huron's Palace is the official name of the presidential palace and uh, it, it be had its name because numerous herons inhabit the building. At the tip of the southern point of the old city is Plaza de Francia um, that uh, has is in this square there are a lot of stone tablets uh, and statues uh, deciding the story of the French role in the construction of the Panama Canal. There's also the French embassy and uh, a memorial to the approximately 22,000 Spanish workers um, from France, Guadeloupe and Martinique that died trying to create the canal. Most of them were killed by yellow fever and malaria and among the busts is also a monument to Cuban doctor Carlos Finlay. He discovered this, that uh, mosquitoes transmit uh, yellow fever and malaria and it was uh, through this uh, discovery that uh, finally these illnesses could be eradicated in Panama. The Panama Canal Railway goes from Panama City to Colón on the Caribbean side or vice versa. This train goes back to 1855 and it was the first interoceanic train in the American continent. This railroad was partly restored in 2001 and features elegant air-conditioned cars. The dome car has an upper deck with full-length observation windows and a bar. The uh, journey takes about 1 hour and 15 minutes. 
The story of the monumental effort to build the Panama Canal is powerfully depicted in murals mounted on the rotunda of the Panama Canal Administration Building. In 1838, a French company was given concession for construction of highways, railroads and a canal across the isthmus in Canada. Napoleon Garella, an engineer sent by the French government to study and report on the whole situation, recommended a canal from Limon Bay to the Bay of Boca del Monte, 12 miles west of Panama City. But lack of capital caused this canal project to be abandoned. Very few human endeavors have aspired to accomplish something so incredulous and as spitting the continent. An all-water route between the ocean was seen as the ideal solution by the French, and the idea of the canal was enhanced by the success of the Suez Canal. What followed was a long fight for rights and concession of the proposed canal. The USA was adamant that uh, any future canal had to be under their jurisdiction, but the French and the British also expressed a vivid interest in building the Panama Canal. Uh, American President Hayes was quoted in 1880, either the canal is under American control or there will be no canal. Nevertheless, there was no American effort in starting with the canal's construction. It was in fact the French who laid the first stone. The French under Ferdinand de Lesseps began construction of a sea level canal, that means without locks. Um, that was in the, at that time, Colombia's province of Panama, and they started in 1880. Ferdinand de Lesseps um, had been the most important foreign involvement uh, in the Suez Canal, and he was called the hero of Suez. Lesseps' success at Suez made him confident, maybe overconfident, um, and he thought the canal at Panama would be no different than building the Suez Canal. The French began their work in a rush. They had done insufficient prior study of the geology and hydrology of the region. Um, the French were using machinery that was previously used to mine diamonds. One of the engineers in the French Canal project was actually Gustav Eiffel, um, that's the guy who later found fame in building the Eiffel Tower. Um, but the French Canal project ran quickly out of money and at the same time thousands of their workers fell ill and died of yellow fever and malaria. And these conditions made it impossible to maintain an experienced workforce and uh, many people just returned to France and they didn't want to work there anymore. So in 1893 after a great deal of work, the French scheme was abandoned. For France, the failure to finish the canal was a huge scandal. Um, for the United States, it presented a great opportunity. The, Atlantic, um, the American Atlantic and Pacific Ship Canal Company, owned by Cornelius Vanderbilt, secured the concession for building a canal through Nicaragua, Plans to build such a canal were abandoned in the early 20th century, although they're being talked about again right now. Um, so uh, under President Theodore Roosevelt, the Americans bought the French equipment and the excavations began again on May 4th, 1904. This time uh, John Frank Stevens was the uh, chief engineer and his primary achievement in Panama was building the infrastructure necessary to complete the canal. Stevens also argued the case against a sea level canal like the French had tried to build. He convinced Theodore Roosevelt of the necessity of a canal with dams and locks. Masses of workers were mobilized from various places of the world and brought to Panama. They came from all over the world Hundreds of cu cubic meters of earth were moved and rocks were blasted out of the way. The main work took 11 years and cost 387 million US dollars. The building of the canal was finally completed in 1914, two years ahead at the set of the set target. Set target had been June 1st, 1916. 
and despite previous failures by other organizations, the United States Canal Project was able to overcome the numerous dangers present at the isthmus between South and North, uh, and North America, and they built what today remains as one of the greatest engineering marvels of, mod of the modern world. The old Panada Panama Canal system has three lock systems that uh, are needed to elevate the ships up and down. On the Atlantic side, they built the Gatun locks with uh, three different steps. And on the Pacific side, they built the Pedro Miguel lock and the Mirror Floors double lock. The main level of the canal is 85 feet above sea level. So all the ships are elevated 85 feet through the various locks and then uh, elevated down again. Also two um, artificial lakes were filled with water along the way. At no time, um, no single effort in American history had exacted such a price in dollars and in human life. The American expenditure from 1904 to 1914 totaled at 352 million. Um, and that was far more than any cost of anything that the United States government had ever built up to that time. Together, the French and American expenditures totaled at, at uh, 69, 639 million. It took 34 years to build the canal from the initial effort in 1880 uh, until the opening in 1914. It is estimated that over 80,000 people took part in the construction and uh, that over 20 to 30,000 lives were lost in both the French and American efforts. The Panama Canal was inaugurated on August 15th in 1914 when the SS Ancon drove through the canal for the first time. The Panama Canal uses no pumps. Instead, the water is drawn by gravity from Gatun Lake. The canal consists of these two artificial lakes, several improved and artificial channels and the three set of locks. The total length of the canal is 50 miles or 80 kilometers. Until 1999, the Panama Canal was operated by the United States. The USA received fees from the ships traveling through it, but they also paid a rent for the canal zone to Panama. The Torrios Carter Treaty led to full Panamanian control effective at noon on December 31st, 1999. As planned, the canal was turned over from the US to Panama that day. The canal still flourishes, even though many have been spectacle about the turnover. Over 100 years after its opening, the canal was widened with two new set of locks allowing for larger size vessels to pass through. The new locks are operated in addition to the old locks. Currently about 70 ships sail through the canal each day. The average transit time takes uh, 10 and a half hours and the canal employs a total of uh, uh, 276 canal pilots. This is actually the only sea passage in the world where the pilot takes over the ship from the captain. Everywhere else the pilots make suggestions that the captain then follows. But in the Panama Canal, due to the difficult navigation, the pilot is in charge of the ship for the duration of the crossing. Starting from the Pacific, for example, a ship may then pass through either the old or new locks at Mirror Floors. If they go the old way, they have to go through the two locks at Mirror Floors. If they go the new way, they pass Mirror Floors in the new entrance and then pass uh, a huge new lock at uh, Pedro Miguel. But if you go through the old two-stage mirror floors lock system, um, you have the approach wall, which is one, in, one mile long, and then you have a total lift of 54 feet at mid-tide. Mirror floors is a two-chamber lock with two shipping lanes. Each chamber is a thousand feet long. Each of the canal's massive old gate leaves are 63 feet wide, six, uh, uh, seven feet thick, and between 47 and 82 feet tall. They were all made in Pittsburgh. The old and new single flight Pedro Miguel locks then offer alternative gateways into the Gela Cut. The 
uh, original single stage Pedro Miguel lock is uh, 0 0.8 miles long and is the last part of the ascent with a lift of 31 feet up to the main level of the canal. Separate channels from Gatun Lake will then allow the ship to be routed through either the old or the new um, three flight Gatun locks and uh, that's the descent back into the Atlantic at the other side. The Gatun lock, uh, the old one, is a three-stage flight of locks, uh, 1.2 miles long, and it drops the ship down to sea level in three steps. This is one of 55 locomotives in use in the old locks of the canal. They tow the ships through the locks and keep them in the exact position. These are built specifically for the Panama Canal at a cost of around 1 million US dollars each. The pilots of the locomotives use bells and lights for communication with the ship's pilot and for confirming commands. At Gabun Lock you can see also one of the old steam-powered locomotives used at the beginning of the canal. The Panama Canal has become a vital link for the entire world. A man, a plan, a canal reads both ways the same. It's called a palindrome. A man, a plan, a canal. The interior of Panama has uh, many national parks, including the Gamboa Rainforest, which features 900 different species of birds, as well as monkeys, sloths, crocodiles. You can here see a cappuccino monkey or toucan. In Panama, there are three different species of toucan in the rainforests. The earliest inhabitants of Panama were the Cuevas and the Coli tribes. Unfortunately, they were decimated by disease and fighting with the Spaniards when they arrived in the 1500s. Some tribes survived in the forests of Panama, including the Embera Indians. The Embera Indians dress traditionally, but they can be rather modern people as well. They use cell phones and they do know the big cities like Panama City. They choose to live in traditional villages in the rainforests. Many of them have traveled to Panama City. Some have even studied there and one is, has become a doctor. Uh, young people have a choice uh, of returning to the villages after their education or after studying or living in the modern part of Panama. Many choose to go to the villages. Colón is the second largest city in Panama, situated on the Atlantic coast at the Caribbean end of the Panama Canal. Simply put, Colón is Panama's most notorious city. It is a sprawling slum of decaying colonial grandeur. Colón was named after Christopher Columbus. The city's economy unfortunately collapsed following the completion of the canal. There was simply not enough work for the thousands of suddenly unemployed laborers. The safest part of Colón is the free zone, which is a secure uh, cruise port as well. Panama is a fascinating country with an amazing canal and an abundance of wildlife. If you have enjoyed this presentation, please give me a thumbs up and sign up for more destination presentations on the One World Travel Channel. Thank you for listening and have a great day.